Oi, gente, tudo bem? Eu tô aqui no estúdio, no ateliê de dois colegas meus do curso. Eles foram muito gentis em me receber aqui, trataram muito bem lá no curso. E eles vão me contar um pouquinho sobre como que é o trabalho deles aqui na Inglaterra, é, como que eles veem a moda sob medida aqui. Vou fazer algumas perguntas e, é claro, vou traduzir, vou deixar a legenda aqui pra vocês. This is Reese, this is Rachel. You are young adults and you've chosen this profession. Um, how do you see the future of bespoke tailor here in London, in England? London's like uh, the home of tailoring, so especially with, with Southern Row, there'll, I think um, there will just be a lot of progression in that direction. There was a lot of like mass market stuff mm -hmm. um, going on but I can see a lot of the future of tailoring going back to the spoke with more people more interested in the detail. I like to think that people will eventually start to care about the effects of fast fashion and mm -hmm. realise the advantages of like bespoke tailoring. And kind of see the value yeah. of it. Yeah. The true value of having your clothes made for yourself. Yeah. Especially for yourself. Yeah. 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 Do you think that people Uh, tend to go to that direct direction nowadays, like seeing this movement of slow fashion. It definitely used to be bigger, like because yeah. uh, you didn't have like common. a yeah. lot of. And now they have access brands. to everything so quickly yeah. and so cheaply. It's a easy way to look good or be up to date with trends and etc. Mm -hmm. For but that's just easier for them. Like not everybody has. A disposable Access. income to yeah. spend on a five thousand pound suit or sure. something like that, but they can not get the same effect by any means, but feel a similar kind of way if they buy a high street suit and get it altered for them. I suppose that's a way of. So, yeah, hopefully, eventually, it'll be able to come back around to be more of that, or that being more common. Mm -hmm. But I also understand that it's a it's an incredibly expensive investment, although it's an investment. Nonetheless. Okay. Is it common to have a suit made here? Just for men and for women? Um, Or just like extremely rich people have it made? Um, it's quite it's quite uncommon to have your suit made for yourself unless it's a wedding. If it's a wedding, mm. people usually tend to spend more. And if, the, if you have to wear like suits regularly, if you don't have to wear suits regularly, people tend not to then spend a lot of money on the suits to look good because there's not anybody that they need to really impress mm -hmm. but with um if it's a wedding we get like, customers come to us and say it's my wedding uh, yeah, okay. in, in wedding, two months time we best make us a suit if if it's for a wedding or a, a big event then it's quite common because mm -hmm. people can rationalize the expense okay because they they know it's for a big day that they'll never forget and we're making this bespoke tailoring course why did you decide to take this course So we originally trained like uh, uh, at uni and we did a bespoke tailoring um, unit for six months with a tailor from Savile Row back then too, but that was in 2014 or something like that. And since then we've learned a lot of other methods, like we've learned quicker production ways of making a suit. Mm -hmm. And it kind of got to the point where I was producing a suit and then not having any satisfaction once I'd finished it, like there were so many things wrong with it that mm -hmm. I was not content with giving it to the customer and being proud of what I made so we decided that we wanted to go back to how we originally learned so we're kind of doing it to try and refresh our memory and get back into what we started and make a better product of it. We can make garments, we can make suits but um, we just wanted to take it to the next level. You also draft? Yes. You do the drafting yes. and then yeah. the sewing, the stitching or yeah. yeah. Okay. Basically do the whole, the the whole, whole process. The whole process, yeah. yeah. Um, You told me the other day mm -hmm. that people find you through word of mouth. For you, what's the most important thing when dealing with a client directly? I think just to get an understanding of the person and what they want to achieve from coming to us. Because sometimes a client has a idea in mind of what they want, but it might not necessarily be cohesive mm -hmm. um, with their body type, mm -hmm. their body shape, yeah. the style that's in now. Um, yeah, 
I think one of the most important things is to really understand the customer and what they are trying to achieve mm -hmm. because what they have in mind you might be able to achieve that with a different method because you, they have a limited understanding of what, mm -hmm. what when it comes to producing actual clothes um, yeah there are a lot of techniques can achieve what they want tell me talking about customers and clients tell me one challenge you have while making a baseball suit or a dress or any garment uh, and how you managed to solve it like oh my God, so many. <laughs> yeah, yeah you have it like in all uh, every time all of them every time <laughs> when i say oh this one's going to be easy like never is never. That yeah. the most probable. And when you say it's going to take you one hour yeah. it's going to take you four hours yeah jordan uh rachel's brother we made a suit for rachel's brother and uh it was quite it's quite a difficult challenge because we didn't have much time we only had one, one fitting, fitting which usually only one fitting, one fitting yeah. yeah usually so you have we three had asked so him and his girlfriend measured him so none of us even measured him so oh. we we started on a base obviously they did a great job but we were unsure of whether it was exactly how we would have done it okay so then we drafted the pattern and made a 12 based on the measurements that they gave us and then i went home i did the fitting with him and it was completely off balance, it didn't fit him across his chest, it was too big on his back. The trouser was relatively okay but there was a lot of problems in the jacket and I only had that one day to try and fix as many things as I could on his toile, knowing that that's the only thing, that's the only opportunity that I would have to see it on him before I made the real one. Okay, but did you do that on the calico? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I always do that. Yeah. Yeah. We, we've, it's always important to make a toile first. Yeah. Um, because some materials can be really, really expensive. So, so it's, best to, yeah. it's best to do it on the calico where you can afford to, to uh, ruin it. With Jordan, yeah. it was a very big alteration. So, but we only had that chance. So there was, once we made it, it looked much better on him the time it was finished than it did the first time. Mm -hmm. But there was not so much we could do because basically when I gave it to him, he wore it the next day. Yeah, see. Okay. It looks really good and it looks good to the general population, mm -hmm. but when it uh, to a trained eye in yeah. Yeah. gloss off, or that's when it will be um, like noticeable. But to the regular person, they won't. Yeah. This it looks perfect. But you just person. see like, oh, I should have done that better. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. But uh, what I usually say in all my videos that you should make the toile first. Yes. yes. And Always. I was uh, telling Rachel that my blog name is Calico. Oh, okay. It's like rock cotton. Yeah. It's nice. yeah. yeah, it's very good. Because it's where it's like a blank page mm -hmm. uh, for drawing or for writing. Mm -hmm. Like you can have the draft there and then you can change yeah. anything, mm -hmm. everything you want. Yeah. So I'd like to thank you very much thank you. for thank you. inviting me here. Actually, You're I kind welcome. of invited myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, you a, can come back whenever you want. Whenever you want. It's a pleasure having you. Yeah, it's a Maybe pleasure. Maybe we can repeat this interview and we'll be in Brazil. Sure. I'll be in your studio. Oh, you'll be very welcome in my I'll studio. be very hot. I'm, you, I'm very pale. So. You need some, some luck. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I see your work here. It's lovely. Really well made. You're going to be such a hit. I hope so. Really hope successful. So. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the dream. The aim. Some years I say, oh, I interviewed them. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll, uh, we'll bring you. We'll, we'll bring, bring you, you in. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. A gente olha essa mesa de passar, tem o ferro industrial e tem espécie de um vácuo here, here. <risos> aqui. Olha o que acontece, o Reese vai passar a roupa. Yeah. So nice. It's actually acting here. Oh, that's amazing. The 
the whole um, thing is to make it flat. Yes. So it just uh, the whole idea. Yeah, it just sucks the the steam out of it, so that you can um, get as much creases out. It also okay. has this uh, the bed also warms up, mm -hmm. so it has a temperature gauge on the bottom, so you can turn it to different heats. So yeah. it allows to dry the fabric as well, slowly. Very nice. O Luiz está me mostrando um livro de modelagem que ele ganhou do professor dele na, da Savile Row. Your teacher was from Savile Row, right? Yeah, Howard Ames. And uh, it's like one of a unique book, isn't it? Yes. Esse é um casaco que a Rachel fez. Não tem costura aqui no ombro. Olha que lindo o bolso. Todos os materiais são da Savile Row. Que é aquela rua de alfaiataria que eu mostrei pra vocês. Aqui uma... A fenda, the vent. Can I, can I see the, the in breast pocket? Ok. Very nice. Top color is so different. Here. O Reed vai me mostrar esse pé calcador que franze. Ele tem vários pés. Vários que a gente também tem, só que alguns diferentes. Então, olha que legal. This one will gather, mm -hmm. ok? I've got a quick Você controla com a tensão da máquina. Isso que ele me falou. Eles têm esse pezinho que eu achei interessante. O de franzia a gente tem. Mas esse aqui também é interessante porque tem silicone aqui embaixo e não deixa o tecido fino é, puxar fio nem nada. E também tem... Is there a one for velvet as well? Um, you told me... Yes. Yeah, tem um que é especial para veludo, que eu achei muito legal. Oh, it's this one. Look. How cool. Yeah. So the wheels, they roll around. Okay. Like the the whole idea is not to leave imprints. And imprints. Okay. Yeah. Esse pé aqui é para fazer pesponto, top stitch, pesponto in Portuguese. Uh, can you show me with the how you did it in the seam? So, and here you can able to put the uh, yeah in the seam so that way you can use it as a guide. Você usa esse pezinho como um guia na costura para fazer o pesponto. What about the other one? The other one it has a differentiated foot. Okay. It's Ele called, tem duas alturas de pé. It's called a compensation foot. Okay. Great. It's for normal stitching or just? Uh, you use it for normal stitching. On denim you would use it jeans. So okay. that you can, it's two, one level higher than the other. So you can mm -hmm. put it on the high, high level. Okay, great. Estou aqui no aeroporto esperando para ir embora, depois de 20 dias. Hoje foi o último dia de aula, na verdade ontem, porque está de madrugada. Foi muito emocionante, eu nem filmei nada, porque não deu tempo, não teve muito como. Mas foi emocionante e muito gratificante ter vindo, ter feito parte dessa turma. Todo mundo me recebeu muito bem, me ajudou muito. Mas deixar aqui só minha gratidão por tudo que passou esses dias. Foi maravilhoso. Eu definitivamente voltaria assim no futuro para fazer um outro curso.